There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the Gate Church, thank you for joining us for another online worship service. It is such a joy to be able to worship with you, uh, connected by God's Spirit. Even if we're scattered, we are all connected as the body of Christ today, especially today as we recognize the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. Today is Pentecost, so it is the birthday of the church. And I don't mean the birthday of Aldersgate Church, I'm talking the church. The Christian church was born on the day of Pentecost because God's spirit fell upon the apostles. And uh, from there, the church, just, just as the spirit came as a fire, it spread like a fire. And Peter preached a powerful sermon through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then from there, you got churches springing up in homes and you got, you know, Christians springing up everywhere. And now here we are and we have buildings that we aren't always using. <laughs> But we are the church, and it's because of what happened by the power of God's Holy Spirit uh, entering into God's people. And so uh, today, thank you so much for joining us for worship on this special day. I have an announcement, and that is, uh, first of all, VBS. If you didn't 
already hear about that in the last service. It's very important to get registered for that as the deadline is coming up. So uh, please register online at aldersgateyork.com slash VBS 2020. And for more information on when VBS is or how to get involved, it's all on the website. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out. Also, we just had our last Wednesday in the Word, at least for now, um, as, as our focus is shifting on the conversation of how to re-enter into the church and you know how to really spring up these life groups and home churches. Uh, that's where my focus is going to go a lot of uh, my time is going to be in that as well. And so it seemed like the right season to put a pause on Wednesdays in the Word. So I want to thank everyone who's been faithfully attending Wednesdays in the Word. It's been awesome having that with you. Uh, and you can always, if you miss me too much, you can always go back and watch the Wednesdays in the Words on YouTube or on the bulletin board in, on the web website. Um, and talking about re-entering the church, I know that some of you might be really eager to get back in. Some of you might be a little hesitant to get back in. Uh, just know that we're thinking about it, we're praying about it, and we have a team working on it. Uh, and so if you want more updates on that sort of thing, Dale actually just gave a um, State of the Church address. And so you can find that on the website as well. And that'll give you more information. If you haven't already checked that out, please check that out. Uh, we're doing our best to get every bit of information out to you uh, through the website and through the Facebook page. So if you're following along, we really appreciate that. Uh, so uh, before we begin uh, the next step in our worship service today, we have a call to worship and announcement from Vanessa Trauger. Aldersgate Church family, I just want to tell you about a new piece of our virtual worship that we are going to be starting for the summer. Every week we are going to take a trip inside somebody's home to hear how they do worship at home. So this week we're going to step inside the Curry's home and they are going to share some music with us this morning. Next week you'll have to come back and find out what we're going to hear from next. Glory, God is what our hearts long for. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come blood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. It's an opportunity to be in God's house as we are about to celebrate the day of Pentecost. Amen. It is our prayer that God would do new things in our individual lives. Amen. Like he did in the lives of uh, the disciples who congregated in the upper room. Mm. And the spirit of Jesus. God came rushing down like a mad wind. And thereafter, they preached the gospel fearlessly. So today, my wife and I are going to minister through a song called Almighty God, but it will be done both in English and a Basel dialect from West Africa, Liberia. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Worship with us.
And now let's hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to start in Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 through 38. 
Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the clouds by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. The next verse is from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I'm now going to jump to Acts chapter 2, starting with verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. I'm now going to jump to verse 12. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. And the last verse comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Revive the church today. Oh. 
Welcome to the gathering place here at Aldersgate Church. As you know, we've been studying the God in You book with Dr. David Jeremiah now for several weeks. But today, we are not going to look at chapter 12. We are going to talk about Pentecost and the Shekinah glory. So next week, we will study chapter 12 and 13. And if you have the book and you want to read uh, for the next message, that would be wonderful. I would like to also let you know that next week we're also having Holy Communion. So you might want to go to the store and get some juice and bread and be ready. And why not get some extras so you can invite maybe a class or your small group or maybe some of the friends in the neighborhood and make it a home church communion service for everyone. I have a confession I like to make with you today. No, I'm not going to tell you about my sins in my life or anything like that. This one has to do about the lack of biblical knowledge that I had for many years of my life. I went uh, you know, to church practically almost every Sunday. I was raised in a Christian home. I occasionally read the Bible. I went to Sunday school. I went to vacation Bible school. I went to Messiah College. I went to Asbury. I was ordained as an elder in the United Methodist Church. But there's something I didn't know about. Now, maybe it was taught, but I didn't catch it. And it's called the Shekinah Glory. Yes, you heard correctly, Shekinah glory. Now, perhaps the reason that I don't recall Shekinah glory is because it's not in the Bible, at least the word. It's, it's, it's like Easter. It's like the word Christmas. It's like the word incarnation or trinity or deity. Um, it's not in the Bible. But the concept is in the Bible. And, and there's many times in the Bible we find Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory um, is, is, is very common. Once you become aware of it, you'll find that it's all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. The word Shekinah is a Hebrew word. It means dwelling or one who dwells. And the word glory refers to God. Now, many times when we think about God, we think of him as this marvelous uh, uh, creator, right? Or we'll think of him as the father of the Trinity. Or we'll think of him as a majestic or a sovereign ruler. But you know the encompassing description of God, the best encompassing description of God is his gloriousness, his glory. Now think about it. God is greater than great. God is everywhere and, and all the time. And he supersedes stupendousness. I mean, God is uh, amazing. He, his prodigious attributes is beyond our perspective. It's a little bit like if you took a little tiny molecule, right? And comparing that molecule compared to the supermassive galaxy, there's no way that little molecule can understand the greatness of its surrounding. So it is with you and I with God's glory. God's glory is beyond our comprehension, beyond even our amazement. And so when we talk about Shekinah glory, we're talking about a glorious God that uh, sometimes intercedes into our lives and gives us just a little glimpse of his holiness. So in the Old Testament, we'll find many times where God will display his glory. To start out with, you remember the time when the, uh, uh, the Israelites uh, were led by God out of Egypt, there was about 2 million people. And what were they led by? They were led by the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. 
and that was Shekinah glory. You remember the time when Moses was uh, taking care of his sheep and, uh, and he looked over and he saw this bush and, and there was this fire that was in the bush that just attracted Moses and he walked over and the, and the bush was not on fire. The fire was not consuming the bush, but yet there was a brightness uh, of God in that bush. And it was so holy that Moses had to take his sandals off to be in the presence of God in that fire. Shekinah glory. Yes, that's exactly what was going on. Now, perhaps you remember a time in the Old Testament where um, Moses is called by God to go to the top of Mount Sinai. And as Moses is being called to go up to the Mount of Sinai, there's, there's, there's like a fire on the mountain and it talks about the smoke going up uh, like a furnace. And, and in, in, in that scripture, it actually says that the mountain quaked, which it says violently quaked, which means it was like an earthquake. Imagine that. That was a Shekinah moment when Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, which, by the way, our Jewish friends, when they celebrate Pentecost, they are celebrating that time when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. That was a Shekinah moment. Later on, you will note that Moses went to the top of the mountain again. And when that time came, it was when the mountain was covered with smoke uh, for six days, actually, where you could not see anything. And at that particular time, God was giving the blueprints of the tabernacle, to build a tabernacle, a place for God to be worshipped, and also gave Moses the blueprints of the Ark of the Covenant. That was a Shekinah moment. Now, remember when it was built, when the tabernacle was actually built, and uh, the Ark of the Covenant was placed in the holies of the holies of the tabernacle? We read about that in Scripture in Exodus 40. The, there was so much glory of God. It says it filled the temple of God that the people could not go in. The temple, the tabernacle, excuse me, was so filled. Uh, I remember that um, teaching a class on the tabernacle was one of the greatest classes I've ever taught next to Daniel and Revelation Studying the book, uh, or not the book, but studying the, the tabernacle in the Old Testament is, is, is a, an awakening experience. And you say, Pastor Dale, that's the Old Testament. How could that be an awakening experience? Well, let me tell you how. Because when we studied about the tabernacle, we realized that it's the foreshadow of Christ. And in the midst of that tabernacle, we have the Shekinah glory. As you know, the tabernacle has three sections, basically. You have the courtyard that goes around the temple, and it's covered or around with a, with a fence, if you will. And, um, and then the second part of the, of the uh, tabernacle area was the actual tabernacle, the tent itself. And when you walked in, that was called the holy place. But then in front of that holy place, there was a section called the Holies of Holies. This was a room that was about 15 feet, not about, it was 15 by 15. And in there was the Ark of the Covenant. And it was divided from the holy place to the, uh, so that the presence of God could be in there. And it was a pillar of fire that laid upon the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant by night. And it was a pillar of cloud by day. And no one would dare walk past the curtain they called the veil to be in that Holy of Holies area because of the Shekinah glory of God was too great for mankind to, to, to be in the presence of. And only once a year could a priest enter that Holy of Holies. And he had to go through uh, a, a very methodical process with the sacrifice. He had to be properly dressed and prepared and have the proper uh, sacrifice for God. The holiness of God. Do you know that pillar of fire that was on top of that mercy seat and a pillar of cloud that was upon that mercy seat would stay there until God would want to move his people through the wilderness and then he would lift up that pillar and the people would follow and then they would build the tabernacle up again and, and that's where people would remain. That was a Shekinah glory. Now another time is when um, 
is when the temple uh, was built, when Solomon built the temple, and we read about this in 2 Chronicles 7.1. In fact, let me read that scripture. Uh, we'll discover how uh, we see the Shekinah glory. It says, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. And when all the Israelites saw the fire coming down and the glory of the Lord above the temple, they knelt on payment and with the faces to the ground, they worshiped and gave thanks to the Lord saying, He is good. His love endures forever. The Shekinah glory caused the people of God to drop to their knees and place their faces on the ground and, and to worship. They couldn't even get into this beautiful temple because it was already filled with the glory of God. Now I have some sad news, at least for a little while. In Ezekiel chapter 10, we find that Ezekiel has a vision and his vision as the, is that the Shekinah glory actually leaves the temple ascends to heaven and leaves the people of God. That was a vision that uh, Ezekiel had and unfortunately it became a reality because the people of God had turned their backs against God. That is so sad. That'd be like if we today didn't have our churches, we didn't have our Bibles, our songbooks, they were all taken away. All our Christian music is all taken away. Anything that's holy, anything that's good, anything that's righteous would be just ripped and taken away from us. Can you imagine how, how we would uh, be and how devastated it would be not to have any of God's gloriousness, His, His presence among us? It would be awful. And that's actually what happened to the Israelites at the end of their history in the Old Testament. Very, very sad. Very sad. Very discouraging. But here's the good news. 800 years before Jesus was born, before Jesus uh, died on the cross, and before he was resurrected and eventually ascended into heaven, 800 years there was this man. His name was Joel. Yes, he was a prophet. And, and he prophesied a time, a time when the Shekinah glory would come down upon God's people. Only this time, the Shekinah glory would not come into the temple that was made of stone and wood or come into the tabernacle, which was a tent, basically. But that the Shekinah glory of God would come within his people. <laughs> That's Pentecost. Pentecost is the time when God came to his people and moved within their hearts and into their minds. If you will recall the experience of Pentecost, what was going on, right? Well, first you had this violent, it says in Acts 2, this violent rushing wind, it appeared like wind, that came in and filled the house where everybody was seated. And then it talks about the fire, that something appeared like fire that came into this, this, this room, this place, and touched everyone was there. And the next thing you knew, everybody was talking about the deeds of God. It says the, the, the things, the acts of God, and they were doing it in languages that they'd never spoke before. They were speaking foreign languages of the foreigners who were also in that same room. And they were perplexed. They were confounded. They, they, they were amazed. They, they didn't quite understand what was going on. And so uh, later on we see there's a description of the event given to us. The Shekinah glory is now among us, my friends. We live in a time where we're blessed where we don't have to go to church to be the church. We are blessed because of the Holy Spirit of God is now just not among us. His gloriousness is not just something of a concept that's beyond us, but it's something that's within us. 
This is amazing. This is an awakening experience. Think about it. The same Holy Spirit, the same pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites, the same fire and smoke on top of the mountains, the same, the same fullness or the fullness of the Spirit of God in, in the tabernacle when it was built and the temple when it was built is now within us. This is Pentecost, folks. Uh, Pentecost is not just a cute birthday for the church. Pentecost is the manifestation of God's glory. And, you know, Pentecost is not just another day in the neighborhood. It's a, it's, it's a day when we realize that God has given us a pipeline of his glory among us that we would experience his authority, experience his sovereignty, experience his brilliance. Speaking of brilliance, let me share this with you. I, I never even knew this was in the scripture until my experience of understanding the Shekinah glory and the Holy Spirit. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Read that scripture on your own time when you have, have a chance. Because basically what it's saying is that because of the Shekinah glory, because of the Holy Spirit, that demonstrates that it gives us the ability to experience that Shekinah glory, we begin to be able to see some of the things that only God can see. That we can begin to hear things that only God can hear. And it says that we begin to know things only God knows. You see what's going on? God's presence within us allows us to experience Experience a realm of reality that goes beyond the self. Another scripture passage, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God. All surpassing power is from God and not from us. I, ever since that, that Bible study class, I'm on this journey of discovering things I never even knew before. Seriously. It's been about three years now. And um, it's just totally has given me the ability to, to see a little more of God's glory than ever before. I think probably, like many people, I had God in a box, and I thought maybe I could comprehend God, and that maybe I, would, I could know God by knowing His Word. But you know what? I could be the smartest person on earth. I could know everything in the Bible, and yet it would just be a glimpse of His gloriousness. God is amazing. God is God. He's beyond our understanding, folks. He's beyond our amazements. God is awesome. God is awesome. I want, if you will, to take some time this week and download the study guide. Spend some time with God and, and rediscover. And for some of you, it may be the first time that you'll discover the Shekinah glory of God. I want you to do that, and I want you to spend some time. Uh, you can get on your knees. I know there's a few times I'll do that, and, and just thank God for his manifestation uh, of his gloriousness, and, 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 and just thank him. And you say, well, I don't even know if I have the glory. Then get on your knees and pray, because God is empowering his people today. This is the day, this is the year, this is the time that God is revealing himself to us. And he doesn't want us to see him from a molecule perspective. He wants to see us to see him at a greater perspective than we could ever even imagine. So spend some time uh, reading the word of God and spend some time with the study guide and, and, and talk about the Shekinah glory in the Old Testament and New Testament 
and see if it doesn't help you to come to a fuller understanding, uh, I shouldn't even say understanding, uh, a fuller um, appreciation for the manifestation of God. And I think I'll, I'll say this scripture to you as well, and many of you have this one memorized. It's 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 12. It says, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought uh, at a price, and therefore honor, honor God with your bodies. There are so many songs, and I'm not going to sing, so you're, you're in good, uh, good shape for that. But there's this one song written by Samuel Longfeller. I uh, wrote it back in 1864. Holy Spirit, truth divine, dawn upon the soul of mine, word of God and inward light, wake my spirit, clear my sight. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, cleanse my soul. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would make us whole. Break us, make us, fill us, wake us with your wisdom, O oh God, in control. Holy Spirit, send your flame. Burn in me your holy name. Heat me, meet me, then complete me. So your message I proclaim. Holy Spirit, send your fire. Make your love my whole desire. Clear me, cheer me, bring me home into your shire. Folks, this is the end of the message that I share with you today. But it's the beginning of God's glory for the rest of our life. May God bless you and may God's grace and promises continue to be upon you until we meet again. Thank you. And God bless. Thank you.
Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, come breathe upon our hearts. We only want to hear your voice, God. May your Shekinah glory dwell within us today. And like a rush of violent wind, may your Holy Spirit fill our homes just as it did on the day of Pentecost. Change our languages so that we would speak only to one another in unity and in love. I pray that we would be swept up by your whirlwind spirit and we would be made one as your body, no matter how scattered we might be today. And no matter our circumstances, Lord, may we abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whirlwind spirit, we are waking, waking. Whirlwind spirit, we are praying, praying. Whirlwind spirit, we are waiting, waiting. Blow, spirit, blow. Blazing spirit, we are yearning, yearning. Blazing spirit, we are yearning, yearning. Blazing spirit, we are turning, turning, burn spirit, burn. Spirit on a golden house, free us from our shame. Burn in us your light of grace, a sacred dancing way. Spirit, we are needing, needing. Holy Spirit, we are pleading, pleading. Come, Spirit, come. Like the fall of distant thunder. Oh, oh. 